Well, welcome to our global call to prayer here from the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network uh, Studios. My name is Luke Skelton. This is my wife, Susan, and we want to praise the Lord for this opportunity to come to you in prayer. And you may have prayer requests. You may have praises. We're just so thankful for this next hour, what we're going to be sharing. Exactly. Uh, this program is hosted by the Pacific Union Conference and, of course, Loma Linda Broadcasting Network in partnership, too, with Good News TV. And we're just so happy that you're here and have joined us. In this next hour, we are going to be having some amazing stories, stories and testimonies, uh, beautiful worship in music, and also um, a prayer, prayer, lots of prayer, um, which at a time like this, we cannot have enough of. And so We all need it. Depend on it. and um, yes. So we are just looking forward to seeing how God is going to bless. So please just prepare your hearts and your minds to receive the blessing. Be open to the Holy Spirit and what is going to be shared as you participate with us here um, at the Loma Linda Broadcasting um, uh, Studios. And we're just excited that people from all over the world are watching. Amen. And so we know where two or three are gathered uh -huh. um, in the Lord's name. He is in the midst, and there's so much more. So there's going to be, yeah. So we're going to start off with a, a, a song um, by Cecia, uh, Emily, and um, Karen. And Karen mm -hmm. Three sisters who we've had some beautiful music by them oh, so far. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a uh, testimony. Mm -hmm. of a testimony from uh, Elder James Black, who is the Pacific, uh, I'm sorry, the North American, North American Division, Division Prayer Ministries leader and he's going to talk about his health challenge and how it's so important to continue your dependence and trust in the lord through every trial and challenge thank you okay we need to share these songs we invite you to um, there where you are to think about a promise so far today we've been talking about God's promises and 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 claiming those promises believing them and 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 just declaring them in faith to our Heavenly Father and so I invite you as we sing this song that you may have in mind a promise that has held you through this season, whether it was a promise that held you this morning, this last week, maybe it's been a promise that has been sustaining you this last season. God is faithful and he wants to fulfill his promises for our lives today. May we declare this in faith. You're the God of covenant, of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you say. Though the storm may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to Can't prove there's 
I'm so grateful for this opportunity to come and share with you part of my journey in recent years and how prayer has really made an impact in my life. Back in 2009, I was diagnosed with a bone marrow disease that got to the point where it threatened my life as it grew to stage four. It's called mild dysplastic syndrome. As a result of this disease, uh, I needed a bone marrow transplant and I'm so thankful that God provided my daughter as a half match for me and because of her gift to me, uh, I'm alive today along with God's grace and his mercy. But during this period, you get to the point where you have no other option but really to depend on God. And, you know, I thought like many others, you know, I've had a prayer life. And as a pastor, you know, I've prayed for thousands of people. But then you come to that point in your life where you realize that everything you've told everybody else about, you've got to now come into grips with that. And I found myself in a new space with God in prayer. I found myself at that point where my conversations, as I call them, with God was changing. For I was not looking at prayer as just something that we do, but prayer became that life-changing vehicle that really connected me with God. I found myself in a place where it was, it, it was hard to get to amen. Uh, the Bible talks about praying without ceasing. I got to the point where I grew in my experience through my pain and through my agony, where I began to talk with God all the time. And that became a real blessing. And you know what I learned more than more importantly is that prayer took my mind off of the disease. It took my mind off of whether the bone marrow transplant was going to work or not. It took my mind off of, well, if it does work, if it's going to come, if the, if the disease is going to come back or not. Prayer just kept me in a good space with God. And through it all, I tell everybody that it changed my whole life because I got to know God in a different way. And prayer became that vehicle that took me and kept me in the presence of God, even to this day. And so I tell people all the time that the James Black that you knew, he doesn't exist anymore. He died and God made this new creature. And it all came as a result of my connecting with him through prayer. And so I tell people that if you've never seen a miracle before, you're looking at a miracle now. 
And I consider my life a true miracle. God answered my prayer. He heard my prayer. But what did he actually hear? What did he actually answer? Many think it was a healing of the disease. Yes, that took place. But folks, just like the, the friends who took their friend uh, to hear Jesus and, and they got to the house and the place was crowded and they climbed up on the roof and they tore open the roof and they let the man down in the presence of Jesus. Oh, that was true faith. And when, they, and, and, and when Jesus healed the man, folk thought that, you know, to say your sins are forgiven, something was wrong with that. But Jesus wasn't just interested in the disease. Jesus was interested in the eternal salvation of that individual. And so Jesus said, your sins be forgiven before he healed that man. That's what God did for me. God healed my soul. He forgave me of my sins. He cleansed me. He washed me out. He made me new. And so the, the, the stem cells that I received from my daughter, yes, that was life. But God gave me a different kind of eternal life that I can hold on to forever, knowing that he cleansed and washed my soul and made me whole again. And so you know what? The miracle for me was God saving my life and making me a new creature. That all came as a result of talking with God all the time, seeking God like I've never sought him before, asking, seek, uh, asking, seeking, knocking persistently, saying, God, please help me. And to this day, there's one prayer I have not prayed. I've never prayed the prayer, God healed me. The only prayer I have been praying is God save me. I am so thankful that when we come to God and we talk to him and we present our petitions to him, let us trust God to do what only God can do. Let us trust God that as we're praying to him, that the God we're talking to, before we even open up our mouths, before we even come with the request he already knows and he has to answer we can't rush or force God's answer you know when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray at the end he said you, you, you know you you're the kingdom the power and the glory when we go into that space oh we sense God's kingdom we come into his kingdom we, we, we sense his awesome power and more importantly we embrace his glory I want to challenge each of you as you're praying and seeking God as your theme is for this prayer conference, that you are seeking God and coming into his glory through prayer. May God bless you in your prayer life. May God bless you this weekend with your prayer conference. And may God bless us eternally as we wait to see him soon. We're praying for you always. May God bless you. Well, Elder Black sure is a miracle, as he said. And not only was he cured, but he was saved. And we all need that healing of our soul. salvation. Mm -hmm. The healing of our soul. So what a tremendous story. Now we're going to go into another story. Mm -hmm. um, you want to mention it? Yes. Um, this is going to be a powerful testimony of uh, a, a young man. Yeah. Very young man. <laughs> another healing testimony. Yes, another healing testimony. Xander Dawson and his mother and father, Brian and Ruth. Yes. So right let's back. go on ahead and go to that segment now. In February of 2019, our second son, Xander, uh, contracted the flu. He also contracted strep and pneumonia. And he got progressively worse, eventually developing a septic shock and multiple organ failure. And he was life flighted to the hospital where his heart stopped. And he was brought back by a very dedicated team of physicians and nurses and put on life support. Um, we have four children. We had a new baby. And so it was a very difficult time for our family. And we're not sure how so many people found out, but we started receiving messages from people all over the world um, on almost every continent telling us that they were praying for Xander. And people were posting on social media about Xander and the prayers just started pouring in and miraculously um, even though he had a about a 7% chance of survival, uh, he did survive. And we know that that was due to the prayers of God's people yeah, all around the world telling us that they were praying for him and coming together to pray for him. Yeah, we had that at one point his diagnosis was, you know, we don't know how he's going to be, uh, if he'll even be 
you know, with you mentally. Uh, but uh, went from that and the possibility of him losing fingers and toes from the septic shock to, um, you know, with, within a matter of a day, two days to, well, it looks like he's not going to lose anything to him coming to and, and uh, just ultimately being normal who he is today. Every time there was a hurdle that we had to face, um, people would start to pray. And every single time, um, miraculously, he would he would survive whatever it was that, that was threatening him. And um, it was a real witness to the nursing staff, to the doctors, um, and to us. You know, it was a strength uh, strengthening, um, faith building experience for us. And one of the things that I really was the most touched by was hearing from people who said, um, I've, I had stopped praying. I haven't gone to church in years. I don't have much of a relationship with the Lord anymore, but I heard about Xander and I felt like I had to pray for him. And through praying for him, I've reconnected with God. And there were several stories like that, that people shared with us, um, either of themselves or someone that they knew who um, had been willing to pray for a little boy. And I think because he was a child, it it touched people's hearts and it um, brought them out for prayer in a way that it wouldn't have had it been an adult. And they were willing to do this for him and then ended up having their own relationship with God restored. And that meant the world to us. And it meant the world to Xander when we told him about it in the hospital, he, he smiled and he said, well, then I guess it's okay that I got sick because it helped people um, reconnect with Jesus. It was quite a moving experience to, to hear of people from, uh, from Africa, from Norway, from Denmark, from India, uh, from what were some of the other places? Um, Brazil, Brazil, yeah, Bulgaria, yeah. I, I mean, literally all over the globe, uh, save the North and South Pole. <laughs> we didn't hear anybody from there, but uh, but we had an outpouring of of messages and and I mean support in every way. Um, and people would come in and say, "We've never seen." Uh, uh, a, a family with with such a massive network of support that you have and we would be able to say well you know we belong to the seventh day adventist church and it's a worldwide movement and and we have people literally around the world praying for us and and mm-hmm. so by god's grace we we're able to to witness to people families in the hospital and 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 uh and the staff as well and not just adventists that were praying but um oh yeah people would tell their friends and family members um a friend of ours had a client who was a Sikh and she mentioned the situation to him and he went to the temple and had the entire Sikh temple praying for Xander. And we had, um, it was the church of the Nazarene here locally where we live in in Auburn, California, all, all different Um, churches. There were, there were church members from this area calling all the area churches, all the different denominations (laughs) and asking them to pray for this little boy. Catholic churches and and the like. Yes. So it was really exciting to see. Um, how God's people can come together from all churches and and unite together for something yeah. like this. And um, Xander is, is a living testimony to God's power, definitely, and the power yeah. of prayer um, because he's cleared every hurdle and and surpassed, far surpassed what the doctors believe was possible for his prognosis. He's uh, no longer wearing leg braces. He's gone through his surgery and and therapy and he's he's running uh at school just normal he's doing really well in school and um for a boy that they weren't sure would have any cognitive function you know he plays the violin he does well in his classes he's um mentally completely normal so god gave him back to us whole and we're incredibly thankful for that absolutely thankful for all who have been praying and who continue to pray for him absolutely We are thankful for each one of you that turned in prayer requests. And I have a list of them right here. And I'm not going to have time to read all of them, but we want to pray for you. We want to pray for every one of you that sent in your prayer request. Um, God, I thank you so much, Lord, that you are the God, the King of the universe. And Lord, there's so much hurt out there. There's so many people that are sick. There's many people that are 
are, are just have so many problems in their lives, God. They're suicidal people, and there's so much, God. And I just pray that you will be with each one of them. I'm going to pray specifically for some requests, but God, you know the ones that aren't mentioned. Oh, God, you are a mighty God that loves each person. You love your children. Like, God, each individual, each individual that's listening right now, thank you. And, God, we want to pray for Ruby's brother. He has COVID, CO, and I just pray that you will be with him. And there's many others that have COVID-19, too. Lord, I pray for every single one of them. God, you, the, I know that some of them have passed on, and I pray for the families of those that have passed on. I pray that you will give them that peace that only you can give. God, you have promised, I will give them perfect peace to those who keep their mind on you, and I thank you for that. And then, God, there's a couple of physicians in our in Loma Linda, right here where we're broadcasting, that have um, cancer. And I want to pray for them. And I know that you're a God that does heal, but you're a God that heals now, later, or in the kingdom. But we would like to see them healed now. And then there's Val, who has cancer. Lord, I, I want to pray for Val, too. And Mary has cancer. And then Belinda and Jackie there's several of them that, several of you out there that do have cancer, and we would love to see you healed. But God, we put them in your hands right now and ask for your healing hand. And I'm thinking of the lady in scripture that touched your garment and was healed. God, and thank you for that. And we pray for your will to be done with each person that we have asked um, for healing. And God, I have one more, Tony, Lord, he has insomnia and has asked for prayer. Thank you so much that you are watching over him and each person that has asked for prayer today, that you, very, you be very close to them. Thank you, God. Amen. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, 
my soul it is well with my soul it understand the circumstances we have to journey and many times we wonder why life is so unfair this was one of my questions why is life so unfair I only was five years old when my life was turned upside down in a matter of minutes I was the youngest of three siblings, my brother and my sister. We were brought up in a good home, a loving and very close family. My parents were devout Catholics and instilled in us religious principles and values. But it all happened just so quickly. I mostly remember the void I felt. I missed playing with him. He was such a loving father, but now he was gone. Things at home changed so much. Two years later, mom felt she needed to come to USA and visit my uncles. And so it was, at that time, I was only seven years of age. Mom left us with our grandparents. The pain of losing father and mother, something bigger than I can, I just can't explain. I was 14 years of age when we arrived in USA. Happy to be with mom and the new family. I quickly went from having one brother to uh, three brothers, one sister to two sisters. But everything was so different. A new family, a new stepfather, a new religion, a new country, a new language, and even this new religion that... Uh, he was with mom already with a new set of rules. We were Catholics and we just want to stay that way. But now, with this new religion demanded so much from us. However, we did not have a choice. We have to go to church. And I felt that God was beginning to open my eyes to Help me on my pain and my loneliness. I soon realized that, uh, uh, that if Jesus loves me, uh, he's going to help me go through so many things. Started my freshman year when I was 15. Those were the hardest four years of my life. Uh, the pressure, the people uh, smoking and drinking and, pa and parties and everything. But God and mom's prayers played an important role in those difficult years of my youth. I asked him to help me to erase all my bad childhood memories. I felt so good when I played sports. And my love for sports just brought me, uh, even though 
a lot of medals and, and a lot of things that I just, I was happy for it. But, but then something else that because I was playing football on Saturday and doing other things, sports on Saturday, that was something that I have to deal with it. Being able to represent California in my last competition of the year, I asked, uh, based on my sports records, I received four, uh, three scholarships uh, uh, to UCLA, Stanford, and Santa Clara University. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, and this also brought me much joy. God is good. God bless us so much at that time. But then I had to do my last competition in California, for California. And so and my mom said, son, I'm praying for you. I've been praying all these years. I'm praying that you come back to return to God, to the church, and the Sabbath. And, he, he, and, and, and the way she was so quiet and humble spirit brought a sense of peace on my life. And so it was that on Friday morning when I was getting ready to fly to L.A., one of the greatest competitions, I promised her that this was is going to be my last one. And I said, Mom, you know, I just have to really... Uh, go over there and come back. But she said, I'm praying for you. Continue praying for you. And I guess she did a lot of prayer for me. Because that, uh, that day on Sabbath at 11 o'clock, before my competition, I was just feeling bad. Came back, came home, and I told my mom, you know what? I just decided not to take any of the, of the scholarships. I'm just gone with that. But I have to go to, I have to, go to college. And she said, I know we don't have money and all that, but then uh, somehow we got some money and went to Mexico to study for three years. Came, coming back, uh, I was in Hayward, and my father-in-law saying now that he helped me so much. Go to, to, to work for two summer times, go to PUC uh, college, and then I, it, it was nice. So I came back, and that was wonderful. She helped me. He helped me a lot. And, and guess what? Not only opened the doors for me, but uh, the jobs and all that, but he uh, allowed me to have some part from the family to me. He, he was my father-in-law. And I'm thanking you. I'm thanking God for what he did. Didn't get a sports, but I got this. Uh, this wonderful reward. My wife for 45 years, uh, Alina and my two sons. It was great. My mom's prayer helped me give up a lot of Jesus, a lot, a lot for Jesus. But my Jesus gave up so much for me. He died in, on the cross for me, and I will love and live eternally with him. This is my story Young people, you can do it too, because God is good. I don't know about you, but as a mother, I feel like we just need to come running into the throne room right now. Thank you, Horace, for sharing with us the story of your mother's prayers and the impact and influence it had in your lives. And so come with me now as we go into the presence of our Father and pray for our families and our children. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come into your presence. Lord, you have invited us to come boldly before the throne of grace. And you reminded us that there's just enough mercy and grace for whatever our need is. And Father, as mothers and fathers and as you look at the listening audience, Lord, out there, you can hear these parents crying out the names of their children, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord, in this generation. Father, we think of students that are preparing for exams right now, Lord, and we ask that you would give them the mind of Christ, that you would send angels to be at their sides to encourage them and to help them to recall the things that they're learning, Lord. We're thinking of Mark, whose name has been sent in, who is caught in drugs right now, Lord. And there's so many other Marks of this world, Lord. And we're asking you, the one that has promised that you will contend with those that contend with us, and you will save our children. You will set them free from the captors. And so we say thank you, Jesus. 
We pray for those that haven't come to know the goodness of God yet. We pray for Ashley and Danny and Jesse and Leon and Chime and Christine and Jennifer and Christopher, Lord, and Christian and Father, you know their names. Every one of them is in your heart and on your mind. And beyond that, Father, you have them engraved in the palm of your hand. And so we come to say thank you that in your time, in your time, because you're not willing that any of them will perish, Lord. And Father, we come to you because um, there are so many of our young people that are just looking, looking, looking for some reason some living God that there is there for them, interested in their welfare, and to know that there is something beyond the grave. And so, God, would you introduce yourself to them? Would you draw them to yourself? Would you help them to know that you are real, alive, and living in their lives? And, Father God, as we ask you to bless our families, we thank you that you hear. We thank you that you answer And we thank you that before we call, you already have the answer on its way. And we ask all of this in the strong and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Truly, what a... What wonderful promises and testimonies we've been a witness of and been able to um, to hear today. We invite you to listen to this next song and to be blessed. As we meditate upon God's promises in our life, his faithfulness, God is good, church family. Promises. 
set me free my hope will always be in your promises to me Good morning and happy Sabbath. I'm very privileged to be here today um, to share my experience in prayer. Um, My name is Kendra Miranda and I am here on behalf of the Young Adult Department. Um, But before I share, I'd actually like to just bow my head for a word of prayer. Father, you are good and you are gracious. And Lord, you walk with us through our times of uncertainty and struggle. And so we praise you. Thank you for letting us each have a testimony to praise your name for In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, you know, it's interesting that both uh, Ed and Joyce were able to share a testimony in which they had a direct answer to their prayer, um, giving relatively promptly and shortly. Um, But I'm here to speak on behalf of the testimonies and the prayers that do not get answered um, in the time that we desire, or even those testimonies, those prayers that have not yet been answered. At the age of 12, I began to experience symptoms that were not normal for my age. There was a lot of pain, a lot of appointments. I actually have a twin sister, and so there was a stark contrast between the many times that I had to be at the doctor, getting tests done, lab work, um, seeing different specialists, and knowing that something was definitely wrong um, within my body. It led me in a lot of years of uncertainty and pain and struggle not only for myself, but for my precious family. It wasn't until the age of 15 that I finally received a diagnosis um, that was deemed to be incurable and life-lasting. And it led us into a time as my family and myself of not necessarily questioning why, but asking God to give us the strength that we knew we could not produce for ourselves. So there was a lot of prayer. Um, A few years later, uh, the symptoms were not getting better. They were worsening. And it was time actually for me to head off to college with my twin sister. And a week, actually two days before graduation, I received the news that I had a brain malformation that was going to require for me to actually be staying at home um, while my sister left. And it led me to ask the Lord, why? Like, I, I, I've had to endure quite a few things already in my journey. I really want healing, Lord. But I need you to do what I don't even know you're going to do. And so I'm going to try to trust you. So there was a lot of prayers, a lot of struggle. Um, quite honestly, a lot of pain. Uh, physical pain, emotional pain. Because it was difficult to continue doing life with so much uncertainty, thinking that pain would be something that I would know for all of my days. I remember that in the beginning of this experience, especially when I was first diagnosed, I would come to these youth and young adults events and vespers and church, and we would sing of heaven, and I couldn't make it through praise and worship time when heaven was sung about. Because I knew for me, heaven was my hope, of living life without pain. It was very hard. I I would often have to leave with tears streaming down my face because I I couldn't bring myself to a place of having people see the struggle. God would so much change my heart, though. At the age of 19, I underwent um, Chiari decompression brain surgery in San Francisco with a lot of hopes and desires that this would more than likely change my experience. So we went in hopeful, my family and I, um, and I had surgery on December 17, 2018. Um, We waited a year um, to see what the results would actually be. And as time went on, my body was very much telling me, nothing has changed. You haven't received the healing that you've desired. And I had to take each day in faith asking God, I still need the strength that I could not produce for myself. And he did. It's been over a year now, and it's brought me to a place since that surgery um, where I've come to know my Savior 
in such a way that I know that he needed for me to experience through this struggle. You know, what I have come to learn is that prayer, prayer is the greatest opportunity for God to change your heart. What I needed most was to turn my eyes away from what I desired most and to trust the goodness and the faithfulness of not only my Savior, but now my very best friend. There is no other way. Prayer brought me to a place where I would come to the throne of grace every single day because I could not make it without that strength. Prayer brought me to a place where no longer I wanted heaven because we talk that it's going to be a place of no more pain and suffering, and we know that. But to know that that would be the place where I would be able to see my precious Jesus face to face. I've come to long his presence more than this healing. I've come to know my healer and want him more than I want my healing. I will not lie. It has been a struggle. I have known pain every day of my life. The actual outcome of that surgery was we realized that after eight years of unknown um, nerve damage, it has not been able to be reversed yet. But it's brought me to a place where I have come to trust a God that is taking me through this journey, and I want to walk this life with him. I hold on to Isaiah 63, 9. And it says, in all of their sufferings, he too has suffered. And the angel of his presence has redeemed them. In his love and in his mercy, he saves them. He lifts them up and carries them all their days of old. The beautiful thing about the God that we serve is that he knows our struggles. He knows our pain. He knows our suffering. He knows the uncertainty in which we live and we walk this life. And he says, my child, you don't have to do this alone. And he carries us every single step of the way. What I've had to hold on to is not losing heart, but giving him my heart every day. To be able to do this thing called life and to be able to climb this journey, just continue to walk with him. It's not easy and there's seasons of um, coming back to the Lord in question and a lot more of a struggle wrestling like Jacob did but I've come to know my Savior. You see, because sometimes those unanswered prayers are exactly what we need for God to take us to the places where we search our hearts, where we surrender, where we say, Lord, yes, this life of uncertainty and difficulty, I will walk with you. You see, even though I haven't had my prayer answered in the best way that I would have desired, honestly, I've come to know my Savior. And that is all and everything for me. And so with that, I just want to pray and ask the Lord that there's many of us out there that have so many unanswered prayers. In this time of uncertainty, social distancing, perhaps things have been left midway. God knows the end from the beginning. And what he asks is that you would not lose heart, but give him your heart, that we would fix our eyes on him, on his faithfulness, on his goodness, and more than anything, to allow for prayer to take us to the place where we receive his lavish love upon us fully, 100%, and be able to commit all of us, all of ourselves to him every single day. You may have an answered prayers right now, Maybe God hasn't led in the way that you have desired for him to. I know that, but more than anything, he knows your suffering. He knows your weakness, and he wants to be your strength and your hope and your comfort and your refuge and everything that you could never be for yourself. Let him do that for you. Let's pray. Father, you know suffering. You endured the cross suffering shame you were despised and rejected and you bore that cross for the joy set before you you endured the cross and lord you're in heaven you hear our prayers you know our hearts better than we do 
And in that throne of grace, you give us help for exactly what we need. And you know that better than we do. I just want to lift up to you now all the prayer requests for everyone tuning in, watching this. You know the end from the beginning. You know how you're going to see it come through. Perhaps it'll take longer. Perhaps it'll be pretty instant. We do not know that, but you do. So we ask that you would give us faith that we cannot produce for ourselves, strength that we cannot produce for ourselves, that you would be everything and all in our lives, that we would cling to the promises and hold on to you and who you are in your love. Lord, pour out your spirits as our comforter, as our refuge, that we would continue to follow you. That, Lord, the things of this earth would grow so strangely dim as we look into the light and the glory of your presence, that your glory would just penetrate our hearts and give us warmth within our hearts to be comforted. We long for that precious day, not because of just the beautiful benefits of walking the streets of gold, having no pain or suffering, but more than anything, to be able to dwell with you, to see you face to face, to hold those nail pierced hands, and to know that you've led us all the days of our lives. We hope and we trust in you and we thank you for being a God that sees us through. Hold our hearts, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And that is our prayer for you, that the Lord bless you and keep you and give you peace. As we close out the last few minutes of our prayer time, to, our time together for this prayer conference, uh, we want to spend a little time in prayer for some of the prayer requests that have come in. A few more. A few more from the viewers. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got three here that have to do with um, prayer for spouses and relationships. Maddie requests prayer for her spouse and relationship. Alan requests prayer for his wife as she is leaving him. Mm -hmm. And Laura asked for prayer saying, I'm abused by my husband. I need to make a decision that will affect my life. Let's pray. Dearest Heavenly Father, we just ask for your blessing upon all the spouses mm -hmm. and relationships, Lord, including Maddie, that we are bringing to you before your throne of grace. We pray, Lord, that each individual put you first, Father, and um, that you will be the center of their relationship, Lord, that you will supply all their need according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus and heal their relationships, Lord, and to see you first, Father, and that you will put the love in their heart, Lord, um, for each other. Amen. Lord, I also want to lift up Alan and his wife. 
Lord, I ask that you'll help Alan to favor his wife above himself, even as she's preparing to leave him. Lord, may you help him to be a representative of his family and a representative of you. And may you give him peace in his heart uh, and help him to continue to nurture his wife, even as she is uh, planning to leave. And may you touch both of their lives, both of their hearts, that they may be transformed. And also, Lord, I want to pray in general for husbands that we may favor not only our our spouses uh, more, but we would actually even love our, our wife uh, as Christ loved the church. We know that that is your plan, and we ask that you'll help us to do that. And dear Heavenly Father, we know in this time of COVID, the domestic violence has skyrocketed up, Father. And Laura is one of these victims, Father, that um, she's having um, these um, this problem, Father, this trial with her husband. And so, Lord, I lift her up to you. I lift that relationship up to you, Father, and those that are represented by them. Uh, Father, we pray that us as spouses, Lord, we can just help our spouse be the mm. best that they can be in Amen. you, Father, and be a good witness and example for you, and to show that unconditional love in every situation, Lord, is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There's a few other prayer requests here, and uh, we only have a few moments here, but uh, let us just read to the, these prayer requests, um, in particular, uh, there's one viewer who called requesting prayer for our government, for our leaders, for the country, for unity, and uh, peace in this unrestful time. Mm -hmm. Susan, would you mind? Yes, and there's a prayer for a family who is being threatened by a hurricane, and then also um, deliverance, Lord, from the enemy. So please Please be praying, praying for these for people, people as we go off, off air. air. God bless you, and Thank we you hope you've enjoyed us. this program.